Hey guys, welcome to another episode or another tutorial. Today I would like to show you how to create a simple playable, playable ad in, in Playable Builder. So let me open Playable Builder and start from scratch. As you can see, Playable Builder, the UI and the settings is very similar to templates that we showed you in the previous video. So you start with the setup that you probably already know from our tool and that is naming your Playable, playable ad. Number one, of course, if you know the store URLs, you can already already add, but it's the same setting and same logic as you know from, from our other modules. Now, what I would do next is uh, show you how the scene works in Playable Builder. So in templates, you already have scenes, but in uh, Playable Builder, you are the master of how many scenes you actually like to create. So in this case, I would like to have a, an intro scene. I would like to have a game scene where the main game will be taking place. And I want to have a win screen and I want to have a lose screen so I can show you different ways how to fork and how to navigate in, in terms of scene. Important thing that I usually do in the beginning is in the intro screen, I go to scene actions and I create the intro screen. I, you define here what it should be doing. So in this case, I want the intro screen to be shown for one second, and I want the action to be start scene, and you select which scene you would like to start after one second. So in this case, I want the intro screen just to be shown, and after one second, the game scene will be triggered and the user will be navigated there. And the win and lose screen scene, I would like to define that this is the these are the ending screens or ending scenes. This is not infecting the playable itself. This is mostly for a couple of ad networks that require this parameter to be triggered so they know and they recognize when the playable is ending and then they are showing you know, either their own end card or, or redirecting to the store and stuff like that. So usually I do these two things on scene level and then I go directly to the, to the games itself. So. Let us go scene by scene. So first, I would like to create some sort of a background. Let me open my assets and drag them here. So this one will be my background. It can be the same for horizontal and landscape in my case. And just for the sake of having everything ready, let me copy and paste it to all the other scenes. So with this, I have got my background ready for with for all the screens. If I don't want the image, if I want to have a color, I will pick color. If you want to have something else, you have something else. Everything is evolving around these game objects where later I will show you the game mechanics as well, but you insert things like images, text, and everything through here. Let me also change global font. You can change the fonts one by one when you are customizing some sort of text object. But if you want the same font to be in the whole playable, then you do it in, in global font in the beginning. So what else are we missing here? Let me add some sort of uh, text here. Welcome. Let's for some knives, uh, because I will be do showing you today on the example of a knife throwing uh, game object. Let me add some animation in this case, in this case, it will be scale. And let me get rid of the stroke and I will change font color something else just like this now i want it to be somewhere on top of it easily drag and drop to resize and i can change it for vertical and horizontal as well so let's let's do it like this now we can also add some let's call it game icon that i want to be sh shown to the user in the beginning let's say it can be this one i can even turn on some easy rotation so it might be so it, it does some sort of animation in the beginning same will go for the for the portrait like this and if i now click play you will see that after the because i set the scene action after one second to go to the game scene now you will see that if i play it after one second user continues to the game scene so i think this is it for the intro screen and let us go and create some sort of gaming as well. So as I, as I was saying, I want to cre create or show you the throwing knife animation or throwing knife, no, throwing knife game. So first, of course, let's insert the object that is the throwing knife object. 
you customize everything here on the right. So again, on the left, there are objects. On the right, there are settings for each object similar to other places in our platform. So let me change the um, image for the circle. Let me change the image for the targets. You can change different sizes, you know, clockwise retention, anti-clockwise speed, like many things that you can easily customize here and make it your own. Let me make the tomato or apple actually smaller. Rotation sound. Okay, I think I have some. Yeah, so I can use even rotation sound while the spinning target will be spinning. It will be playing this kind of a sound. And let's say I'm happy with this one. Uh, let me change some sort of settings for the game itself. So let's say I want seven throws, seven moves to be made. On portrait, I want the position to be at the bottom. On the landscape, I would like to be throwing from left. So as you can see, that's that's customizable here as well. Let me uh, add some uh, knife here, which is great. You can again customize size of it, offset if it's not cropped correctly, heat radius. Again, different settings. Each game objects, each each thing that we are adding in playable builder is is different. So if I will be now adding. Mahjong, the setting might look differently because you are setting different things in Mahjong than you do in, in Knife Pro, right? Let me add some sounds. So this will be miss sound. This will be hit sound. So again, sounds that are triggered when either I miss or I hit my target. Some sort of, ex like not explosion, effects when I hit, hit the target. So for example, now it sets to explode. I can just do bounce out i can do glow so whichever you choose up to you same goes with how long the animation should be taking place and stuff like that now i have got my basic uh, let's say configuration set up you would say that this is already working yes it is but i want to add some more elements and then we will go to this important part that is events so let me do two more things here let me add some sort of a counter. So we will be measuring how much successful, let's say, hits the user had. So how many tomatoes did he hit? You can, let's, for now, I will do it very simply. I will just do, I will just add this image uh, with value zero. And I will add it next to the tomato. And I will show you in a bit how to actually, you can, make this simple text being interactive. While I'm doing this, I will also add some image progress. Although it's not, you can use this element for mostly for progress bars, but in this case, I would like to have some sort of visible, uh, visible place where user will see how many, how many knives, so how many throws he still has, right? So let me do it like this. Filled image and empty image. So then users will be recognizing layout vertical. So it's going to be here nicely on the left. And let me also do a remove field. So there will be like negative value. If I add, add field, it will be adding after one throw. If I remove field, it will be deducting after each, each throw. So now this screen, this game object is ready for me to continue. And now we should go back, go back to the game object itself and to trigger the events. So first thing first, we want to say that hit count. So how many times he actually hits, we want to select an action. So it will be changing text and which text it is. We have got only one. So it's this one. And let's say with no delay, same goes with uh, term progress. So, so let's continue as I was mentioning the term progress. You basically change again, which elements is responsible for turns. In this case, it's these knives that are called image progress. So I will find the object and let's say with zero delay, the progress should be changed. Same goes with uh, game one and game lost. In this case, I want, I created two scenes, right? One was win, one was lose. So that's why it's important to create what should be done when the user hits everything that he was supposed to hit. So let's say if the game is won, start scene, win. If the game is lost, start scene, lose. And let's say if the game is lost, let's do one more thing. 
camera effect shake for 200 milliseconds and let me add the 200 here as well and 100 milliseconds here so what would happen now if i now play the playable let me try to lose the camera have been shook and i went to the lose screen if i would have won you know i would go to the winning screen regarding the landscape mode as you can see you can customize place of the elements you know sizes and everything as well let's say that this is fine for me but if you want to for example have this counter here you would just simply change it and let's say the progress you would want here for some reason you can easily do so and let me now show you that everything every event work from this side as well so as you can remember i set up two events one was counting the strikes and one should be deducting my my attempt so one attempt zero no hit now i will hit so both of them work let me try to win it and i'm go i went to the winning screen now let's go to the winning screen and just finish our playable. So usually what you would like to have is some sort of button that you would redirect, redirect the user to the to the uh, to the to your app stores. Uh, let's say it would be play play more. It can be resized and placed somewhere like here. Pointer. I would like to actually show a pointer so user understands that he needs to click on it. Uh, let me upload one. So this one and the position of the pointer. Let's change it as well. And now let's go to the event. So this button it will be opening CTA with zero but zero milliseconds. So this is what I would like to have. Let's configure it for uh, mode as well. And I'm done with it. Let's copy paste it in our losing screen and in our losing screen i would actually like the button to be set play again instead of play more now i have my buttons on my losing screens let's add images let's add the winning screen i would like to have this one let's rotate it for let's rotate it once that's enough and let me also add some animation let's say particle effect easily i would want to start it behind it actually not on top of it so let me add it here let's say the winning particles will be this these knives again different settings for every object in this scale in this object i would like the particles to be larger so let's do it like this and you can add anything more of course you can add some text some more animations etc etc now let's do let's copy the image paste it to the uh, losing screen i will change the image for a different one with with an actual tomato and let us do the particle effects as well paste in this case again change the layer so it's behind it and let's change the particle for the tomatoes uh, that's it that would be your playable ad in this case you can you know build it for other networks that you would like to have and you can consider it finished but what you might do else after this one is you can easily customize it even more so for example i want another scene that will be let's say rewarding a user so if he if he successfully wins he will have some sort of a reward system in my playable so i give him some some reward so I will go here again and change this event that after a win, I don't want a win scene to be triggered, but reward scene. Let me do just background here. And let's say now we'll add some sort of element with the reward. It can be a spin wheel, for example, where user will spin some, some objects and one will be winning and there will be some sort of treasure or money or whatever reward you have for him. And, and that will be like another another way of how to utilize this playable, how to connect these objects. And again, in this one, after the spin ends, I want the user to start a scene that is the win scene, because in the previous scene, we are going to this one, and from this one to the winning scene. Let me also do some auto spin. Now I will not customize it, this one. I just want to show it to you very quickly. So let, let us try to play it and win it. Bum, one last time. 
now I got my reward. Now I'm in the windscreen. Now I click the button and I'm done. I didn't uh, customize this spin wheel mechanic and all this stuff in this tutorial because that's for another videos, but I just very briefly explained to you and showed to you how you can utilize, modify and customize your existing playables, your existing projects, and basically make more and more variations out of them and make them, make them better. So that would be it. Uh, please reach out to us if uh, you need more tutorials, if you need specific use cases mapped in uh, videos like this, we would happily do that. If you are, uh, if you don't want to do it like this, always reach out to us, ask for a demo, ask the questions, we will gladly answer to you. So that's it. Have a nice day, guys.